1969, this article was published in Wireless World. That's a British, or was a British publication, and it was in the April issue of 1969. The article was written by John L. Lindsay Hood. This amplifier, even today, is very, very popular in audio systems. He mentions, uh, Lindsay Hood that is, and he, he was uh, aiming to get something with 0.05% total harmonic distortion, or THD, at a frequency range of 30 hertz to 20 kilohertz. The article goes on for 10 pages. There's a this article's been reproduced a lot on the web. I have a complete copy in the subdirectory below. Here on page 8, we have the amplifier. It's a single-ended supply, which means a plus voltage and zero. It's not, it is not double-ended, like plus 15, zero, minus 15. It has two coupling capacitors in it, uh, one for the input, one for the output. Everything else is DC coupled. The first stage is a PNP stage, always. And the second and third stages are NPN. In 1969, it was hard to get quality PNP transistors, at least in any power reading. Now let me point out that the bias on this transistor is passed through inverted and non-inverted to this transistor. There's no gain essentially in this stage. This stage has one input and two outputs. It's important that the bias on this transistor makes point X equal to one half of the power supply voltage. Whether it's 10 or 30 volts, you set this point at one half by changing the bias of this transistor. The original hood diagram does not make this variable, but he recommends selecting 100K approximate resistors to try to get this bias to pull this down to within a half a volt of plus or minus. Load is normally a speaker. It's connected across this. This is, a, I just cut and pasted the original amplifier circuit from the article. And then I cut and pasted this, which is also in the article. And we see that for values of ZL, which is this, of 3, 8, or 15 ohms, he recommends various voltages various current, and this is total current drawn by the amplifier, and values for R1 and R2, which are not, resistance value is not mentioned here. That's why I went to this. The size of the output capacitor varies. When you get below 8 ohms, you have to increase the size of that capacitor. Similarly, you have to increase the size of the input capacitor, and then he recommends the uh, driving voltage here. So what we're looking at is, a, depending on the load, we're looking at using these values. 27 volts, 1.2 amps, and so on. And driving it with about a half volt. That's RMS volts. 
in this same article, uh, April 69, Wireless World, same guy, he has some oscilloscope views. First, this is a sine wave, or a very good sine wave, measured across a 15 ohm load. Here are the distortion components. We'll get back to that. The other two views are with an input square wave at 50 hertz and an input square wave at 50 kilohertz. So this distortion is more considerably than this. And what you want is this. Let's talk a little bit about distortion. Here is a distorted sine wave displayed not on an oscilloscope, displayed on a spectrum analyzer. The sine wave at its primary frequency appears here. These are 20 decibel graduations. I can tell it's distorted because there's energy here in the harmonics. If I were to put in this spectrum analyzer a very good sine wave, the spectrum analyzer would not see any harmonics because it would not exist. With increasing distortion becomes increasing energy in the harmonics. In John Lindsay Hood's day, he would have measured distortion with a, a filter type distortion analyzer. And a filter type distortion analyzer works like this. You put the signal, all of it, good or bad, across the input of the distortion meter. You adjust a, an analog meter on the uh, distortion analyzer to a set value, a red line on the meter. The distortion analyzer is essentially an AC voltmeter with a re frequency response up to maybe 1 megahertz. And the voltage across the input is composed of all the energy in the main sine wave or signal and all of the harmonic components. They're all in the dianalog meter which you set at a, a red line. The second component of a distortion analyzer is a very very good notch filter. Very narrow and extremely high Q so if you were to put the notch filter centered on this, the voltage created by expressing all of these things across the same resistor is now represented on the analog meter as percent of total harmonic distortion. I'm pretty sure that Lindsay Hood used a spectrum analyzer with a filter because the higher quality distortion analyzers have an output terminal after the notch filter. So if you take this output you get something like this thicker line. This is the components remaining after the fundamental frequency of the sine wave has been nulled out or removed. So this represents a 1 kilohertz sine wave at the output. And we'll call this the fundamental, that's what he calls it, is 10 volts per graduation. So that's 30 volts. Looks like 30 volts. That's the fundamental voltages. 
the distortion component, which is this. That's what, this is what is left after removing this. Is 50 millivolts. Had they been displayed at the same vertical scale, this would be insignificant. But he blew it up to 50 millivolts. And I'm guessing that this remaining sentence is, instead of RMS, this should probably be THD. RMS is presented in volts. Total harmonic distortion is expressed as a percentage. This is the output from an analog distortion analyzer after nulling out the primary frequency. So if we look at the square wave input, and square waves have a, a lot of harmonics, you might have to get an amplifier that's capable of 100,000 hertz to accurately reproduce the square wave. I have accumulated four of these, I'm going to call them JLH69 amplifiers. I got them from eBay, I got some from AliExpress. They all seem to follow the JLH format, that is an input capacitor followed by a PMP amplifier, followed by an NPN amplifier, and then two more NPN amplifiers, a big output capacitor. Three of these amplifiers are in kit form, and this is, the, well, it's really number one. I have reverse engineered all of them, well, most of them. I'll provide a schematic of each one, a board layout of each one, and the information may or may not be on the board. This one, for example, was marked was marked XR150, and so that's what I designated on the title. This drawing is not the most recent drawing, but I tried to mark in every case the uh, X point, which is always right here, which is the crossover point. Supposedly it's to be a half of the supplied power, whatever that is. So this is the built amplifier. I have the same thing for amplifiers to three and four. Four is a little bit different in that the two third stage devices are both field effect transistors. So I'll show you what I mean by the X point. Remember on the John Lindsay Hood drawing the X point was here. Physically it's located here on the circuit board. Now, amplifier number one, the, the one that's built, has no provisions for setting the X point to one half of VCC. I think all the other ones have a way of adjusting the bias voltage on this input stage. It's usually a variable resistor. And if you remember back to JLH's voltage recommendation and current recommendation. The current was to vary depending on what voltage was applied. And the JLH drawing indicated a resistor of unknown value here. That's the current setting resistor for the amplifier, most significantly at this stage and it's been made variable. So with these two resistors we can make 
the X point half of VCC by varying the bias on this transistor and we can adjust the system current the majority of which goes through here using this resistor. So I'll publish all this written information for the four amplifiers. I'll test this amplifier and the other three when I build them. And we'll see how they do compared to the oscilloscope measurements in the original article. Now, there were no heat sinks provided with any of these. So either I need to put one big heat sink back here with insulators on it, or I have to put two separate heat sinks because these voltages are not identical. And of course I have to build the kits.